Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. And as always, I'm Steve Wilk. <laughs> We're not going to talk about home-brewed beer this time, but we are going to talk about a fermented food. That's right. We're going to ferment some food. That's right. What are we going to ferment? Cabbage. Cabbage. Which makes? Sauerkraut. Ooh. Now, we, we will show you in a minute how we did this, but yeah. you have a, a personal history with sauerkraut in your family, homemade sauerkraut. Well, that's why they called me Stinky. <laughs> and why you're such a sour <laughs> man. <laughs> my, in my family, my grandmother, my grandma Decker, my mom's maternal last name is Decker, so the Deckers, grandma Decker always had a kraut jar in the basement. It was a five or seven gallon, you know, crock. Mm -hmm. And I was a little kid and it was always down there. We used to pitch balls at it. We didn't know what it was. But that's <laughs> Highly where, sanitary well, conditions. Well, yeah. So, But anyway, Grandma made her own sauerkraut. Now did Grandma say, keep your balls out of the jar? <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> she was a Methodist. <laughs> so uh, at any rate... <laughs> she, she, oh, pardon me. <laughs> but, but I never really knew what it was, except I did know that we, Grandma would cook and she would always have kraut. I'm going to have kraut. I'm going to have fried kraut. And she would had all these recipes and when we're Germans, I mean, we're so German, <laughs> I invade Oklahoma like once a week just, <laughs> just to make me feel good. And you so, can say that because you're of German heritage. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So at any rate, um, she would cook with this, her homemade kraut. And what I remember about it was how fresh and just really good it was mm -hmm. compared to the stuff you buy in a can yeah. at the grocery store. See, my mom loved uh, sauerkraut, but she'd always buy the canned stuff, which is okay. Yeah. But it doesn't hold a candle to what we're about to show you. That's right. Now, uh, one big disclaimer. We are new to the fermented food area, so uh, please do some research online or in books or whatever. Don't use this as your only goal in how to do this. Yeah. Uh, do what we did and go online and, and find some good information and try it yourself. But again, don't use us as the be all end all of how to do this. Uh, the site that I found most useful was from our friend Michael Tonsmeyer at themadfermentationist.com. Go to his website and search for sauerkraut and uh, mm -hmm. that's the technique that we're going to use. Or call my grandma. Yeah, that's right. So with that legal <laughs> disclaimer, uh, how did you take us through it? You, you, this is well, the this is the before and this is the after. Yeah, so this is the more or less finished product. Right. And this is we made this just a few minutes ago. So what we did is we uh, had two uh, heads of cabbage, just regular green cabbage, and we rinsed it off, took the outer leaves off that were you know kind of buggered up and nasty, threw those away, quartered or ate the cabbage, cored it chopped it up into you know fine little strips and little nuggets and then uh weighed that cabbage to find out what two and a half percent of the weight was mm -hmm. two and a half percent of the weight of this particular amount of cabbage amounted to 50 grams of salt mm -hmm. so we use sea salt and uh, so 50 grams of sea salt what i did was to layer the cabbage in oh an, an inch or two thick you know a good couple of handfuls and then I'd take a good healthy pinch of the salt, lay it on that, and stir it up with my hands. And I continued to do that, repeat that process until I had used up all the cabbage and all the salt. The idea being that it, the salt is evenly distributed throughout the dried cabbage. Right. And, and what you will see over the next day or so is that that salt draws out the moisture mm -hmm. from the cabbage and it creates its own brine. So what you do once you get the cabbage in there is you put a plate or something like that on top of it with a weight. And what we're using is a uh, mason jar full of water. Yeah. And it's pushing down on the cabbage so that the moisture will come out. And more importantly, uh, when all the moisture comes out, what you'll have is a brine and that plate will help the cabbage keep under that brine. Mm -hmm. The brine will help protect the cabbage Right. Uh, hopefully, from the the nasty bugs. That's right. And encourage uh, the souring organisms that are going to give us the sauerkraut. Yeah. So here, it, it, this cabbage or this sauerkraut, and we've taken the weight off and the plate off of this. This is around four weeks old, and it's nicely 
sour. So uh, why don't you serve us up some to. sauerkraut? And we are going to have a sour beer to go along with it. And this comes to us uh, courtesy of Mark in Silver Spring, Maryland, who sent us the beer and sent us this nice little card to go with it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that. And he knows what we like because this is uh, uh, New Belgium's La Folie, which is a uh, sour brown ale. Uh, it is the 2010 mm. version, which we had not had yet. No. Oh, wow. So let's... I've cheated. I just ate a little piece of that cabbage. <laughs> Boy, that was good. So I'll pour the beer okay. while you fix us some sauerkraut. So that's it. I mean, it's, it's sauerkraut is so easy to make. And as long as you keep the, the cabbage under that brine, it should be protected from the bad bugs that would make you sick. Uh, and you can put other ingredients in there too. Sure, caraway seeds, small rodents. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, but you can do it. So cheers, let's cheers. try the beer first. Mm. Well, oh my! I just have to say, this is one of my favorite beers yeah. of all the yeah. beers that are out there, all the craft beers, home brews. I really like this beer a lot. And some of the souring bugs prob are probably shared between the beer and the sauerkraut. Uh -huh. So I'm going to see what, how this sauerkraut. And, and in a future show, we're going to be cooking with this as well. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's a dish um, from a restaurant uh, in Kansas City called Lydia's. Mm. Man, that'll get the juices flowing. Mm. Mm. Fresh sauerkraut is nothing like the canned stuff. It's crunchy, as you can hear. Mm -hmm. It's nicely tart. That is so good. And what you can do is, when your sauerkraut reaches the point where you like it, you can jar it up and put it in the fridge, and it should slow down the fermentation process so that it doesn't sour uh, anymore mm -hmm. as quickly. But that's it. Super easy. My gosh. Mmm. James, what a great idea. Mm hmm Thank you for coming up with this. Mmm. Well, thanks to Michael Tonsmeyer for the uh, instructions on how to do it. And again, thanks to Mark in Silver Spring, Maryland for yeah. the nice card and the wonderful beer. And uh, look for uh, a future show where we'll be cooking this up. I have a couple of couple of ideas. I can't wait. Cheers, sir. Cheers. Play with your cabbage. <laughs> Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our 2011 Brewer's Logbook. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Just keep your balls out of it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>